Uh, I'm going to do some welcome announcements and ecosystem updates. Then I'm going to uh, let Mr. Morgan Weck do a product update. Then Ash, I wasn't really sure how to title yours, so I just put GitHub security updates. I figure you may hit on those and or uh, more. And, uh, and then we're going to have ecosystem advisory group discussion. So that's going to be uh, hopefully the, the majority uh, of this meeting. Uh, and we'll let each respective group lead, which is Sean, Peter, Will, and uh, Poindexter, uh, just kind of talk a little bit about their group and their direction and maybe get some um, feedback from you guys. A lot of you guys on here obviously are, you know, MVPs, um, but you're taking part in these groups too. So it's going to be the flow of the meeting. All right, so welcome and announcement. So first off, welcome. This is the first DNN MVP meeting, I guess, that I'm kind of running here uh, solo, so feel free to send me your snide remarks and comments uh, afterwards and during in the chat. But uh, I do appreciate you guys being here. I know that the MVP program has kind of fizzled in the past and you know, some, sometimes people did or didn't come. Maybe the meetings didn't have value. We're hoping to uh, restore that and uh, have a thriving MVP program. So again, appreciate you all joining in. Um, so it occurred to me that like people don't really know what I do in the ecosystem manager role. So I'm just gonna give you the areas that I'm kind of responsible for. That is community, store, and partners. And so uh, you'll see me involved with a lot of stuff and it does keep me very busy. So I'm responding to support tickets on the store. I'm helping, you know, vendors or people who are creating profiles, uh, you know, get onboarded into the store when people don't have money, like I'm helping out with all that. Um, with partners, onboarding partners, um, you know, all the different changes to the partner program and MVP program and, you know, interacting with the community, doing blogs. So I kind of view myself as like some of the glue that helps hold the community together, so to speak. So those three areas are my main focus, store, partners, and community. Uh, so another announcement is that some of you on here uh, were MVPs and you were never sent your awards. So I just want to acknowledge that we did send those out. Um, we also sent out a partner award that was never sent out. So, um, you know, I apologize that, you know, you didn't get it when you should, but for those of you that deserved it but didn't get it, now you have it. Uh, I hope it still holds the same significance. And if you did not get a partner award, but you were supposed to, I mean, I'm sorry, an MVP award, but you were supposed to um, reach out to me and we'll try to make it right. All right, so Denon Corp, as you know, is in transition. So we were obviously acquired and the reason I'm highlighting that is because, you know, we're, you know, in the midst of, you know, transitioning systems, internal processes, applications. And so, um, for example, you know, there may have been like a hiccup with a vendor getting paid. And so we're, you know, following all that stuff up and uh, so I'm, I'm staying on my toes, but we are in the middle of transition of a lot of systems. And I think that's, you know, to be expected. So as far as ecosystem updates, I realize a lot of you guys are in tune with everything that's going on, but you also, uh, several of you are very busy. You may not be able to keep up. So I'm just going to do a quick rundown of some updates, um, you know, just in case you've been missing out. The so Addison, who is an MVP, has tweeted that change has arrived, and uh, that is true. So we uh, kick-started or restarted the DNN newsletter. We branded it the DNN Digest. Uh, you guys are probably tired of seeing videos of me. Uh, I'm tired of seeing them too. We won't have any more videos here for a little while. Um, but we do hope that the, the newsletter is bringing value. So if you have feedback, feel free to send that on. Uh, we merged the Twitter handle. So that is the at DNN is what the at DNN Corp used to be. And we kind of sunsetted the DNN uh, Corp. And, and you'll see also that with the Twitter handles, um, we are more so engaging with community members. So like if somebody does a pull request and it gets accepted, like we're, we're giving them shout outs. And when people are interacting, like we'll just, you know, mention them as they're trying to kind of bring back the community aspect to it. Uh, on the blog page, uh, I'm trying to enforce some formatting consistency. So some of you guys have received emails from me saying like, hey, add an image or resize an image or I added an image for you. 
Uh, you'll see that, but I'm just trying to make it consistent. Uh, vendors or OSS extension creators uh, are now able to blog on the store. If you were listed as a vendor on the store, you received an email uh, from me saying, hey, you can blog on the store if you want to. So if you have a product or any type of open source extension, you know, so that you don't feel like you're spamming users or whatever on the main blog, uh, you're welcome to blog on the store blog, which we're helping promote via, um, you know, the store Twitter and Dean and Corp Twitter. Uh, so we're trying to be more active there, but we're given another avenue to promote products. So we did have some vendors respond to that. We did join the .NET Foundation. We're still in the process of you know, completing all that paperwork. Uh, I was on a meeting with Ash and John Galloway the other day. There you go, Sean. And, uh, Peter, uh, John Galloway also is a member of the ball club. We talked about that too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, um, also Andy, the CEO, Andy Treva posted a three month post acquisition blog. I feel sure everybody on here has read that, but if you haven't, be sure to check it out because he is again, reinforcing, uh, or reiterating the commitment to, uh, open source. Uh, Ash may talk about this, but we open sourced the UI automation and testing framework. We posted several blogs on that. Um, I think that was well received. We've had two community focused webinars, one on uh, module development, one on administration. And uh, Will Morganwick and I had an internal bet on who would win on numbers. And so Morganwick can talk about that when he gets the mic. Uh, DNN and Summit's coming up in, early in, the, in, in Denver, and DNN and Connect uh, was just announced in uh, late May in Ireland. So I don't know. I think Mitchell may be on here. Mitchell, do you want to say anything about DNN and Summit? Is Mitchell on here? Or is he flying an airplane? He's flying an airplane. Oh, no, he is. He is. He's here. All right, well. We yeah. can't hear you, Mitch. Figure his mic out. Peter, you got anything to say about DNN Connect? Yeah, well, uh, the, at this stage, of course, not much, except, um, you know, stay tuned. We are expecting to open uh, early bird registration as we did last year in the month of February. Um, currently, we're focused on getting the sponsors lined up and, um, what else, you know, getting our communication ready, basically getting everything ready, our visuals and stuff. That's what we're working on today. Um, so in terms of sponsorship, uh, we might lose one big sponsor, uh, this year, uh, two has, has indicated that they don't have the funds to do it this year. Um, so yeah, if any of we know anyone else who'd like to stack into that void, uh, we'd be happy to know. Gotcha. All right. Appreciate that update. Mitch, did you figure out your mic? I guess that's enough. All right. So also, um, we have had virtual user conferences. This is what Andy refers to as this quarterly uh, virtual user group. Um, so, I, I mean, I hope you guys are aware. I feel sure you're attending or catching the replays. Um, but just want to make sure you guys know these are happening and they're going to happen once a quarter. Social media, I, I mentioned this, I should have put this as a sub point of the Twitter, but we are engaging directly with community members. And also, yeah, um, some of you guys are aware of this uh, and I posted on DNA Connect and Facebook. Today we had an interesting exchange with a student in France. He uh, said his teacher, uh, he was in you know technology or whatever and his teacher assigned him a project and that was to build uh, a site on DNN. So we, you know, instantly, uh, interacted with the guy and you know a bunch of people chimed in and so I think that, that kind of stuff is great for growing our community um, we talked about that in the awareness meeting here earlier today so if you hadn't checked that out uh, you can see it on the DNN Connect Facebook and on our at DNN Twitter handle and you can chime in if you want so Peter also posted an interesting blog about and it was titled prompt persona bar envy quick site and why I think we're on the right track uh, I don't want to derail the meeting and, you know, get into the details, but if you have not checked that blog out, you might want to uh, give it a look. It's got some interesting commentary. 
And then, uh, as I mentioned, the awareness group had a uh, initial meeting today. And so I think it was a really good meeting. I'm not going to steal Will's thunder. I think he's going to give us a summary on that. But I just want to let everybody know that that meeting did happen today and uh, seemed to be uh, going pretty well. All right. So, Mr. Morgan Weck, I will pass the mic to you. I think you can just click share. I'm going to stop my share. I don't, I don't have a slide deck to share. We're just going to talk about product today. So um, not much has changed since we spoke last. Um, just to kind of give everybody a heads up as to where things are with the product. So we're still marching towards a 9.2 release, which should come um, Q1 is what we're kind of thinking right now. It's looking pretty close to that. Um, one thing to kind of mention, and I, I don't remember if I mentioned this or not in the last meeting, but um, uh, when Andy took over, one of the things that he wanted us to do was to place extreme focus on uh, the bug count, getting the bugs down, and then also customer feedback. So one big shift, um, this is the same message I've been telling to customers as I've been talking to them about the roadmap, is that there's a huge difference in the way that the previous leadership looked at running um, products and running the company versus the way Andy's looking at um, has a bit to do with the fact that we used to be venture backed. Um, and so when you're venture backed, you're always trying to look for something that's going to give you that hockey stick growth, which means that you're, you're experimenting, you're trying new things, you're listening more to the broader market than you are sometimes to your customer base. Um, so that's the complete opposite with where we're going now. So Andy is, and uh, the, all the ESW companies are very much focused on customer success and customer feedback. So a lot of what we're doing is now based upon what customers are asking for, what the community is asking for, what we're hearing as feedback from people that are using the product versus what is the competition doing. So I think you'll still see as we kind of move into 2018 and you know future that we're still going to pay attention to what's going on in the market, but it's going to be more about listening to the people that are actually using the product versus doing things that are going to attract net new people. Now, that being said, one of the big things I think that we need to get to um, as far as the 2018 roadmap is a very good ASP.NET core story um, and how that comes in into improving the technology stack. Um, we're starting to pick up on some of the pull requests um, and so that we want to keep some uh, traction on that as well. And then, of course, the other big initiative will be um, around liquid content. We're going to get that back and bring that down into the core. Um, and one of the ways that we're looking at it is that, you know, liquid content is nothing more than structured content. Those of you that are familiar with what structured content is, it's content items, content types. Um, and so in order to do that, that means that that's going to become a foundation and to what's going on inside the core CMS. Um, those of you that are familiar, there's already a bit of a content items and a content type structure in there today. And Ash and the team have been looking at kind of extending that so that we can continue to build off of that. Um, and really leverage that and make structured content that first class and the, the default way that you go in and create content. You know, when you kind of look at um, the CMS systems that are out there today, um, the way that I've kind of delineated the market is that there's two types of CMSs. There's the site builders, which is the Wix, the Weebly, the Squarespace, which all they're focused on is building that HTML content. And then there's the other, the more commercial, the more enterprise, the higher end systems, but even Drupal has this too, where you're using structured content and WordPress is that way too, where you've got content items that are the basis for everything. And yes, HTML can be part of a content item, but so could the, the pieces that make up a user's biography or um, the components that make up a, a great job posting rather than it being a large HTML block. Um, so that's going to be another big initiative. That's going to be. Can coming. I can I can I ask a question about that? Sure. Um, uh, the, the I took uh, a bit of time out when I rewrote the blog module to kind of test this whole concept of um, not not liquid content but content items back in the day. I thought, okay, well, if this is going to be, you know, a, a useful feature, I I have to try it somehow. And I used that module basically as as a testing ground to see how far you could take it. So using the core ability to have um, uh, categorization and putting your content really into that content items uh, table and everything. And, um, but I was still left, you know, after the, the whole experience, I mean, it works well, uh, you know, uh, no criticism there. Uh, it's just that at the end I was left with, okay, but you know, I did all of this, but what is it really 
give me besides, I mean, the, 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 for instance, the editor, the core editor for the categories was actually kind of, you know, uh, to put it bluntly lame, uh, because it, you know, it didn't allow you, you know, very quick editing and, and structuring of, of, of categories and, and stuff like that. And you couldn't add a root category or something. I, I don't know. There's just some weirdness around it. And, I thought that it would be picked up into the core of these content items in a in a new and exciting way, but that never really materialized. So is this going to be revisiting that and then saying, okay, we're going to take this to the next level and it's really going to have some advantages for, you know, me as a module developer who say, okay, you know what, I'm going to put my content in those content items instead of putting it into my own table. Yeah. Yeah. So if you kind of look at one of the things that, um, uh, the way that we did with liquid content is that we wanted to basically start off with this foundation of a, of a content library where you can go and you can access all of your content. Maybe you're a user that only has access to content that's of the type blog post, right? So then you can go in and do that. But maybe you're an author that's also blog post and job posting, right? Why do I have to go to two different sections of the site to, to manage that? Why can't I go to one centralized content library and get a crafted experience regardless of the type of content that I'm getting. So that's kind of the way we were looking at it. So, and then if you're that, you know, an admin, you can go to one location, you can create all different types of content, right? And you can use it that way. And that does mean that there needs to be a common set of tools for doing that. And there's a, a, a huge set of components that we've already built up on the evoke side. I mean, Ash, what's the, it's like 36 or 30 something plus reusable components. Yeah. If not more than that, that we've built out that are, UI elements, right? That are like text box, rich text box, drop down list, multi select, all you, you name it, it's in there um, to be able to do it. Um, and then that'll mean that we'll also have to do things that will improve taxonomy. You know, even as liquid content inside the Evoke product, some of the critical feedback that we've gotten is around taxonomy. So um, I should be able to go in and create a vocabulary set that may be good for blogs and forums, but I don't want to use that vocabulary set with my job postings, right? Or maybe I do, right? So it's got to be a way that it is that flexible. And then maybe there is a master taxonomy that applies to everything. So I need to be able to have multiple vocabularies if I want to do that. So all of those are items that we want to get in there. And I think that as soon as Ash and his team take the first step of kind of getting that in there, it's going to be built out in the public. So it's going into the core. And so it'd be great to get people to start contributing on that too and, and working with that as much as we can. Um, and I believe, Ash, we're also building it as, a, as an extension, right? So one of the things that we want to do too, as we're starting to build more, one of the things that we were, we were working towards is no longer adding things that are just automatically part of the core, right? So it'll be an extension. So coming back to that model where at some point we want to get to where you have this super thin version of the platform, right? But if you don't want content items, you don't have to have content items. So being able to make it still so that it is pluggable that way. And it's also going to make it so that there's a good upgrade strategy there too. Yeah. It's, uh, speaking of, uh, of which I, th I think that that is a very interesting and, and good point you made there, like not roll everything into the platform immediately. Um, it uh, reminds me of something else that I wanted to ask you. And I think this is the right forum to do that is, um, uh, you know, we, we've got a huge .NET new .dll library, for instance, and I know we veered between keeping everything in one library, monolithic uh, application versus no, let's split off stuff into different DLLs to, you know, to keep development separate. That was for various reasons because, you know, we're shifting to C sharp or you wanted to have an interchangeable component, whatnot. Um, it would, I, th I think it would be nice to have some kind of a strategy going forward, like which way are we going to go? And I guess with .NET Core, the emphasis will probably be more on granular libraries for specific bits and pieces that we start adding. Uh, but then also have a have a really good uh, NuGet experience where stuff is really like made available on a granular level to module developers who would say, okay, well, I'm going to use this and this and this in the core for you know from DNN, and those libraries will actually load. Right. I yeah, be, I mean that's the whole idea. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, when we go to .NET Core, that's how that's .NET Core is all very thin at all the levels, and the whole idea there is to get what you need, just just install and what right. you really need. 
right. and, and not have everything. I and mean, unfortunately, I mean, not only DLL is bloated right now, it's pretty big. Yeah. So, and any, anything you try to remove from it is going to break so many things. So we just can't do that. But any new development, just like Persona Bar, is uh, today you can completely remove that or not use to install at all. Right. Do you guys have a strategy? Have UI, for but, uh, but that's possible today. Do you have guys have a strategy for mixing uh, .NET Core into the main project? Because I haven't been able to do it for my module yet. I'm trying to figure out how you would do it. But. So I think that's something that we're going to be looking at, you know, both Ash and his team and also the technology team um, to provide some guidance on that. So I don't know if I, I don't know if we want to get into that depth of that conversation right now. Um, I can see where you guys would go with this and I want to finish my part first. <laughs> so, um, so just a couple things on to, to finish off the roadmap. So from DNN Corp's perspective, um, and Ash and I were just talking to Andy about this the other day. Um, and it may have been yesterday, but anyway, it's been a crazy week. Um, and there's basically three key areas that I believe that they're the, the companies that focus on product wise. And that's, course the move to .NET Core or a strategy around .NET Core. Um, liquid content and getting structured content in there. And by the way, when we talk liquid content, that branding and all that, once it moves into the core, that's going to be gone, right? It's just structured content. It's not really this, this thing. It doesn't need to be a thing like that. Um, and then the third is going to be um, putting some effort around the marketplace. So um, I think some of you have seen some of the posts I've made on Facebook and I've talked about it with others is that um, the store needs some investment. Um, the store needs an investment of time and investment of resources so that we can um, create that, pre make that almost a launch pad for anybody in the ecosystem. Um, so I have, um, and that, that's the way that I positioned it with Andy is that that needs to be that central location. There needs to be a good directory. Um, it needs to be a way that people can find other vendors, other um, ISVs, partners, everything that should be the launch point for that. Um, and so that means that there's going to be some significant effort there. So I don't see Corp investing in any other major new features unless I've missed something, Ash, but um, page management is coming out in 9.2. That's more on the persona bar. And I can see some minor tweaks coming. Uh, definitely, we've had a few prototypes on the, of some updates to the persona bar that we want to get in. Um, but that's definitely things that the way that we're looking at it. And let's see, some... Uh, some questions in there. So uh, I think Eric said, um, I think, uh, looking at the WordPress advanced custom fields plugin, we have looked at that as we were doing some of the research on liquid content. We looked at that pretty heavily. Um, let's see what else. Oh, subscription well, marketplace. That's definitely something that would be part of a revamp. We have to do something like that. Lots of vendors are asking for it, and that's a way to create some recurring revenue for module vendors too. Is, is um, liquid content expected to be part of the 9.2 release then? I don't, that we were trying to get there. I don't think it's going to happen. I think we're going to make some progress on it. Um, I don't think it's going to happen, right, Ash? It's probably going to. No, happen. very unlikely, Sean. No, in fact, no, it, it's almost a no. Because I think the remaining time we have for 9.2 is we're going to take a look into sort of the high, high profile bugs uh, and issues that are outstanding right now and try to kind of slide them in. And with the holidays coming in, it's just, just not possible to have a large project come in. All right. Any other product questions or concerns? Yeah, I have a question. Will uh, Evoke, uh, will uh, Liquid Content work with DNN 8? If it's uh, like an extension, it will be backwards compatible. I'm asking that because uh, like we module vendors, we will not be able to use it in our products if it, if it doesn't work maybe at least on DNN 8. Uh, yeah, my first reaction is to probably think not because what's going to end up happening is that I think that the, the data model is going to be an extension of the content items and content types that are already there in the core, mm -hmm. which would, of course, require some upgrades and changes at the core level. Um, but the actual, then once that's updated, the actual module and implementation um, and other pieces related to that would be the extension. Um, I don't, unless there's a, yeah, I can't see making the entire content item store the way that it's in there now an extension. You remove that, there's, you're going to break a lot. There's a lot of dependencies there throughout other areas of the product. Are there any other evoke features other than li liquid content which are expected to be moved or migrated into the platform 
Yeah, there, there could be. Um, there's um, one that I've always wanted to see make its way down into the core is the gamification engine from Evoke. Um, again, still being something that's optional, but um, making that available at the platform level. Um, that's one. There are a few other ones, like um, we have essentially three blog modules across Evoke. So um, I would like to see us simplify on one of them. I keep, I mean, how often, it seems like every week somebody's asking what's a blog module to use. Um, and I do think that that's a great way to kind of get things started. So I'd like to see some consolidation there. So that means that some things could just be retired. Um, and then maybe we focus on improving the blog module that's already there on the open source side. Um, but I think that there's a lot of other minor things. We've already taken a few things out, like uh, the Evoke side, we got rid of, we had a challenges piece, we got rid of that. Um, so there's a lot of, a lot of cleanup that's going on. Um, I could see some of the things from social groups or group spaces going down. Um, so more than likely the items where you would see that occur is on the engage side um, and some of those social components and some improvements there. I don't see much more other than some fine tuning. Like uh, there's some things on the page editing experience when you're in pages that like evoke has these little icons and shortcuts and has an improved drag and drop experience over the platform. There's no need for there to be a difference there. Those things should be backported to the platform as well. Yeah, I second uh, Will uh, Will Stroll's uh, comment there. Uh, like the multi-portal management, URL management, there are some uh, yeah some things that are really easy to backport to uh, yeah um, to platform. Yeah. Because uh, those work with uh, the the MEF uh, uh, extensions, right? So that that's just a pain in the ass to to keep two different versions and two different uh, applications anyways. Yeah, I think with URL management, actually with nine, every there's no separation between URL management anymore, right, Ash? That's all, we did move all that down to the platform already, right? Yeah, it's all in the platform. Yeah. Yeah, all the URL. And, and port, port or groups and things like that. Um, yeah, that, that, that could, I don't know, I mean, we, I, I'll be honest, we're going to have to be careful. We don't want to just take everything that's <laughs> differentiators right now. Um, yeah, give us a finger and we take uh, take your whole <laughs> arm, right? Yeah, so it's it's going to take a little bit of time to to sort through all of that. Will, you got one question, I think, in chat. And uh, it is 4.35. We did only allocate an hour for the meeting, so I don't want to be, you know, the guy here, uh, but we need to move on. Uh, Morgan, wait, you want to answer that question and then we go to Ash? Which one? The last one there from Eric? Yes. Um, can you speak to the direction of Evoke and how DNN Corp is going to position it or what the differentiators will be? So, you know, I mean, I think that the differentiators that we have today are still going to remain the differentiators. So there's still quite a few that are there in Evoke. Um, but I think that one of the differences, and just as you heard me talk about the roadmap for 2018, it's we're going to focus more on the developer side of things for 2018. Um, when pr prior to the acquisition, we were focused on trying to speak to the marketer because we were trying to go head to head with Sitecore. But the problem with that is that there's a whole wide variety of other features that we'd have to build. So we're going to focus on the developer, focus on getting our technology stacked the way that we want it, focus on uh, modernizing the platform, um, even more aside from just UI UX, but modernizing it from a technology standpoint. Um, so that I can see there. So that, that's why I'm hesitant to say that too much, that, that too much is going to go from Evoke down. I don't see that happening in 2018. I do see some, some smaller things that may make sense to be brought down. Um, but I think that that'll kind of play out more towards mid 2018 as we start to look into see what we're going to do next. Gotcha. Appreciate it. Well, um, Ash, so you're next up. I think you should be able just to click the share screen button. Yeah. Can you see the PowerPoint? Yes, sir. Okay, so I'm gonna quickly go through the updates. So we'll talk about the pull request, how we did in October, November, December. We're gonna talk about the outstanding pull requests and what we're doing about it. Uh, quickly talk about the labels that we're using on the pull request. 
and uh, I think you've touched on the open source and the blogging, so I'm going to skip that. Uh, uh, so with regards to pull requests, I think you guys have heard from Andy uh, several times now that uh, he wanted to, as a first first uh, first thing he wanted to tackle was the outstanding pull requests. So if you look into the data for the last few months, so November, right after the company was acquired, in October, we put a huge emphasis on processing the outstanding pull requests. We did 44. And then November, it kind of dried out because there were not too many to be done. Uh, and December, the, the, again, we're seeing some more pull requests coming in. So we're processing them as they come, come in. Uh, in terms of the actual list of the pull requests, I've kind of sorted out, sorted this by the name of the people uh, for whom who have, who we have processed. A lot coming from Brian Dukes, uh, Deanna Monster, Hammond, uh, Peter Donker, you've got one. Uh, this list is about two slides long. And the next one is we've got Jan Jonas, a uh, couple from uh, Sebastian, Coleman and so many. So, so these were the list of the people uh, for which we, we have processed the pull request. Uh, so pretty much done with the backlog now. So what remains is the outstanding, outstanding ones. So there are 25 of those outstanding still with us. And if you see majority of them are actually from April 2016 and those are all Sebastian and those are all like mostly database ones. So we're kind of working with him to see do they still make sense or not? And you know how our SQL scripts are written. He's written all that for the older versions and we never process them and they're a nightmare to merge. So probably we're going to leave some of those as is, close them out and have him submit new ones. Uh, but otherwise you can see many of those, many of the months are single digit. So we're, our backlog is pretty low right now. The pull request from community. Uh, moving on to the next one quickly, I want to talk about the labels that we're using. So when you see a pull request come in, we do our best to kind of put them into the right category as to what's going on, uh, is it waiting for a triage. If something is not clear, whether it's a uh, way to work with the product management team to see, does it even make sense to bring this in? So we'll put that. Sometimes we need more information from the from the submitter, so so awaiting response and things like that. What we do need from everybody is to have the CLA on file. So we do check. We have a we have a place where we have everybody's CLA in there. So if there is no CLA, then we will reject them, or we'll say require CLA, and we're gonna kind of follow up with them. We are trying to get the signed CLA in there. And now we're working with the Dotnet Foundation and with John Galloway. We we're going to actually look to change the way how we do CLA. They have a better way to do it or faster way to do it. Uh, automatic all right now is pretty much paper based CLA. You're going to have to either fax or scan and send it to us. Uh, so we're looking to, to fix that uh, as soon as we're able to do that. So that, those are the labels you'll see. Um, these are all labels that we made. There was nothing available on GitHub per se to, uh, to use out of the box, but uh, this will at least have a better way to communicate where we are with the pull request. And uh, I think yeah, I'm going to skip the block that we did about the unit integration test. Uh, let me know if you guys have any questions about uh, any of those. All right, Ash, is, is that it? Do you have anything else? That's it. That's it for me. All right, appreciate the updates. Anybody got questions for Ash? All right, got a comment from Peter says, good stuff, Ash. So, all right, appreciate it. Um, Ash, Thank you should hit the stop share button. Um, Sean, you are up next. I don't know if you're planning on sharing your screen or just speaking <clears throat> about your group. Um, if you wanna share your screen, just click the share screen button. Yeah, I don't have anything to share. Um, so the architecture committee, um, I have not scheduled the first meeting yet. And I, there's also a few folks that have reached out that I need to follow up with uh, in regards to it, their participation and getting that first meeting scheduled. Uh, this last month has been a bit of a challenge for me in terms of uh, getting, finding the time to, uh, to invest into getting this committee off the ground. So. Um, I'm hoping in the next couple of weeks I can get that scheduled.
can you talk to what type of subjects uh, the committee will? Uh... Well, yeah, I think the, the main focus is how can we migrate DNN to run on .NET Core. Um, that seems to be the item that most people are most interested in. Um, and I know that there's been some work from some folks already. Um, like uh, some people have made an attempt. And in fact, I guess it was even Microsoft um, participated in some of the DNN Connect events and you know made some, there was never any concrete implementations, but there were some suggestions on how it might be possible. I think it's probably now with the with uh, .NET Core 2 um, and the, uh, the the additional support of you know all the all the libraries that weren't supported in the earlier version of .NET Core, it theoretically should be a simpler migration story than what it was to begin with. But uh, yeah, I think that that's what people want to look at. All right, Sean, so is that, is that it for your update? Yeah. yeah, that's all the only update I have today. Okay, all right. And, and just to give you guys um, some insight, you know, as we continue to be meeting, uh, you know, I think it makes sense to have updates from each specific advisory group. I mean, if you guys feel that we shouldn't, let me know, but I, I, I just think it'll be good info. Um, Peter, we got you up next yep. for your update on developers. That's right, everyone can hear me well. Um, that's how I look. Yeah, I'm not mooted. All right, cool. Uh, so we also did not have a, uh, let's say, a live meeting uh, yet, but I have set a couple of other things in motion. I, I think, first of all, we needed to kind of square away the discussion what the group was about. Um, so I made a couple of points about that um, in in an email to, to everyone that... Um, uh, that, that registered with the group. Um, it, in short, it comes down to, you know, improving the life for developers and with the specific goal of attracting new talent to the platform, basically. I think that is something that quite a few of us are convinced about that the, uh, the adoption of the framework in the end is driven by people adopting the framework to build out solutions for customers. So, um, uh, having said that, I mean, think that, that of course uh, opens up uh, a lot of different uh, discussions. So some of these discussions I've, you know, I've, I've moved the group to Slack because there is no other tool that I know of that I can probably kind of gather a group as, as big as that and, and try to keep several discussions going. Um, in in a you know in in a handy way. So I'm, so I'm I'm not a huge uh, uh, you know I don't have a lot of experience with Slack, but um, for now this seems to be working quite well uh, for me for this team. Um, and so subjects in that Slack uh, uh, team are, for instance, documentation. I think that's a, a crucial aspect. Um, but also you know the tools that you're using, uh, the various other bits and pieces. Um, the API uh, discussions about the API, uh, and 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 obviously, I mean, for for me, one of the uh, things that I most eagerly look forward to is you know how we will, in the end, you know, collaborate with the larger whole. Like, uh, um, how do we communicate our desires up the chain? How do we uh, communicate sideways? Like, how do we keep a, uh, channels open? towards the other uh, groups because sometimes stuff just bleeds from one group into the other, right? I mean, some of our discussions are obviously about architecture and, uh, and technology. Um, and, uh, but some, you know, because we're all developers, there will be stuff also concerning the store, you know, we'll, we'll, you know that will be in, uh, in David's stuff with, uh, uh, with the store, uh, with the, you know, with the um, partners uh, group. So, uh, I, I'm really looking forward to that, to that, uh, you know, to, to, um, how shall I say, to, to, to make that collaboration as good as we can to, you know, sideways and up. Um, and yeah, so one of the concrete things set in motion is, um, I, I've revived an old, uh, hobby project of mine, which is an API documentation, uh, module. Um, 
which is able to detect methods that became deprecated or have been removed from an API. Um, and I always had the plan to, you know, to finish this one day, but now I've been kind of motivated by, uh, you know, by everything that's happened uh, to further this. So um, look forward to kind of uh, finishing that. It, it will allow us to create an MSDN style uh, documentation uh, on, on, on a DNN site um, and hopefully allow collaborative editing of whatever documentation is on there for specific methods or classes or whatever. Uh, and that way, at least have one entry point for documentation that we can always point to. It's like, okay, well, you go there and you look for the method and at least you'll have some info there, you know, about the signature, about uh, deprecation messages or, or whatnot. Um, other than that, yeah, we're just starting. So I think that's about it. That's all I have. All right. Appreciate it, Peter. Uh, I noticed your Slack channel has been active here lately, which is, is good and, uh, you know, getting things moving forward. So let's see who I have next. So Will, Mr. Stroll, you are up next. Hello. Yes, I'm up next. So we had our first, um, uh, meeting today uh, and we had almost the entire group there we got 14 members at this point and we uh, kind of it was just a kickoff meeting to get on the same page and discuss things like you know logistics and communication our goals um, the areas that we're going to focus on um, and and so it was a it was a good discussion getting things uh, started getting things moving in the right direction um, so we've uh, settled on some things like you know we're also going to be using slack because as Peter said there's there's really no other tool that allows you to collaborate in the same way, especially across multiple topics uh, where we especially will need to be able to do that. Um, and, and so there's a lot, the, the great thing was how much everybody's participating and, and, and how spread across the world we are. Uh, so that's encouraging. Um, yeah. And so we already have our uh, recurring meetings set up. So that's going to be the first Thursday of every month. Uh, unless it falls on a holiday or something. Um, and yeah, so our next meeting, we expect to have some more concrete things in terms of, you know, actual decisions being made and, and, and uh, you know, defining, formally defining our mission and, and setting up who is going to champion what um, and, and setting our official goals. And so what we plan to do moving forward is uh, having monthly goals and then, you know, having goals that are set by, you know, uh, three months out, six months out and 12 months out. So that way we can, actually set up and track and and determine whether or not we're, we're having any success anywhere. So the, the way I, I, I plan to hopefully organize this is around, you know, experiments, you know, treating everything that we're doing as, as a mini experiment and, and seeing if it worked and if it worked, keep going. If it didn't, move on. Um, so that's, that's kind of where we are right now. Um, yeah. So um, and we're, of course, we're looking for other members, other, uh, other people to participate. Um, so, you know, our, I don't think our group can get too large. I think we will always need the help. Gotcha. Appreciate the update, Will. Yeah, so I, I sat in on Will's meeting. I mean, I, obviously, I'm going to be trying to help spread awareness, and uh, he did a pretty good job of running it and had, you know, a good format. Um, will, feel free to share that with the other leaders, you know, if you want to. Um, but uh, kudos on that meeting. So, all right, Mr. Poindexter, you are up now. So I had some serious strategery going on. You know, I wanted to let Will be the guinea pig for his first meeting so I could see how it's all run. And then now I know how to run the partnership. I'm <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, we, um, right, right now, just getting head around uh, exactly who the partners really are now because we're trying to have a broader perspective on what a partner really is. And now that I feel like that's been established, going to try to get a communication sent out uh, probably early next week is, is what I'm targeting and uh, do an introductory on, on kind of what the uh, agenda would be for the first meeting and try to get that scheduled and put in place. Um, did went, went ahead and set up a Slack workspace as well uh, for that group but no one has been invited yet. I plan on inviting uh, people to that uh, in the first email that goes out. So really looking forward, it, it's gonna be a diverse group. Um, so I, I have a feeling that we'll probably split off into some subgroups right off from the beginning. 
uh, but still have conversations uh, with, with everybody involved as well. But uh, looking forward to seeing seeing what can come up uh, out of that and getting some uh, good synergy in the various partner types. So I, I have a question about the partner um, area in, in that, does this encompass evoke partners and um, platform partners, or is this strictly platform partners? I think it's an all-encompassing group is way way I'm seeing it. You'll, you'll have, uh, I mean, the, this is just kind of a rough list of the different partner types, but you have those who are actively selling licenses uh, for Vogue. You have um, people that are more integrators, you know, in, in the ecosystem. You have people that are um, that are reset, like selling their services as far as um, you know, building solutions. It could be a, a module developer or something like that. Um, then you also have people that are just involved in the in the ecosystem in general to on a supporting role. Um, people like Addison and, and things like that. And then you also have people that are like hosting uh, partners as well. So um, right now that's the, the list and kind of working off of there. Yeah, and this is well, just to add to that a bit. One of the things that, as we kind of look at it as the ecosystem as a whole, one of the big things that I was kind of happy to hear when we first started talking about this is that it's not going to be about distinguish about you're a partner if you're going to only sell Evoke. It's it's about how do you participate in our ecosystem and what are your specialties? Maybe your specialties are Evoke. Maybe your specialties are platform. Maybe your specialties are writing web service APIs or mobile apps. So it's got to be more about how the partners fit in and what their specialties are in the ecosystem, not about what they're doing for DNN Corp. Exactly. Yep. So I would just echo that. I mean, that's, you know, stemming from Andy's, um, you know, vision, because he definitely views partners with um, you know, more, more wider perspective than uh, previous leadership. All right, um, so we've got like five more minutes. I do want to be respectful of everybody's time. Um, I guess we can open it up to Q&A if anybody's got just general questions. Um, one thing, um, I guess meeting frequency, obviously, you know, MVPs, well, we're supposed to meet every month. Is, is Thursday, is this day good for you all? I mean, generally speaking, I know everybody's got crazy schedules. If we schedule out far enough, right? And, and another thing, I see you all nodding, so it seems like that's good. Um, another thing is I'm um, considering inviting Dennis Shaw. As you all know, Dennis is like our content marketer, social guy, um, and he's all the time like, you know, asking me questions, looking to be in the loop. And so I'm considering, you know, just having him uh, sit in just to be a fly on the wall to kind of uh, be informed because uh, it could help with some of the promotions uh, that he's doing. So if you all have strong feelings about that, feel free to – um, you know, email me or whatever. So anybody got any questions or just things you guys want to talk about? I'm happy to stay over past five o'clock, but you know, I know you guys may have meetings scheduled or whatever. So uh, we'll just open it up. Um, have you shot anything recently, Clint? <laughs> yeah. uh, I have shot a couple deer here recently, some wild hogs. Uh, but my wife is telling me that my hunting days are over after February, so I'm really going to be hunting hard here the next couple of weeks. Um, so nobody has any specific questions, so I can ask you guys for feedback. Um, you know, what do you guys think about what you're seeing so far as far as like, you know, the, sending out the DNN Digest, us kind of being proactive in communications and, and trying to, you know, have more blog content and things like that and anything that you're not seeing that you would like to see no i think i, I think it's cool i have i have one thing i'd like to add and that's something that i i'm thinking of picking up with my group is to have um a dev hangout uh every now and then um more or less modeled after what uh, scott hanselman does with the uh, asp.net um, a stand up or hangout, whatever he calls it. Um, there, it was our source of information basically to 
find out where .NET Core was heading. Um, and since we're also making a bit of a transition, it would be nice to have something similar uh, for DNN, um, solely targeted at developers. Again, not trying to reach everyone, but saying, okay, well, you know, let's say you're a DNN expert. Let's have that uh, thing. So, yeah, I'm I'm milling it around a bit. I'm trying to find the right people to do this with because um, I don't think it should be a one man show kind of thing. Um, so yeah, uh, to be continued. Gotcha. Now that's good information. And for all y'all putting comments in here, I'm taking notes. I'm gonna mute out while I type. One question. I am recording this meeting. Do you guys want me to post recordings of the meeting in a Google Drive folder so that everybody has access or what makes sense? Yep. Yeah, why not? Just post it straight to YouTube for all I care. <laughs> yeah. Unless we're talking about secrets, but I don't think so. Uh, I didn't say anything obscene, so it should be okay. <laughs> I, I actually had one one remark, and the, it, it was actually kind of triggered by uh, one of the guys that I'm following in the .NET security uh, sphere, uh, Troy Hunt. And, and again, he, he like... Um, advertised about one one specific company who had a secure login but but uh, the rest of the site is non-secure and every time i go to dnnsoftware.com i'm slightly annoyed about the fact that dnnsoftware.com doesn't use https you log on you use https and then you get redirected back to to http or whatever that's that's just terrible so if we want to advertise DNN as a secure platform, let's just try to use security best practices. It's super simple to just switch the whole site to HTTPS and be, be done with it. So can we add that as a uh, it's, it, it, to do it's this? Super it's super simple. Whoever is responsible for that site. <laughs> yeah, it's super. It's super simple, but um, in my own experience, there there are a couple of caveats, and unfortunately. Uh, being in the Microsoft world doesn't help because all the documentation is for Apache out there. Um, so the the uh, I, I certainly at the last conference in um, in Spain tried to make it into a big thing that we had all the know-how and the people there to walk you through putting uh, switching your site to HTTPS. Um, so yeah, there are no excuses anymore in our in our community. I mean, we, we have a lot of experts uh, yeah, in our active community. So if you guys need help in getting that configured, then just reach out to someone. Uh, and yeah, do yeah. It. Specifically, Marietta yeah. Knapp on the- uh, Yeah, but uh, Mitch uh, Stellar also is, uh, yeah. is, uh, is an expert on, on these uh, yeah. matters. So, I mean, we, we have enough people uh, Good. Yeah, being able to do that, so. And Clint, yeah, yeah, I'm fine if you post this on YouTube. Who cares? I mean, I think I think being open that's that shows to the whole community who maybe left DNN for whatever reason in the past they left that yeah that we're back on track and trying to do the right thing. Right. Yeah. No, I just think. Peter and I, David, we're going to have to fix our hair. Uh, if we're going to <laughs> yeah, and I need to shave next time. Uh, I start to look like you. That's not the, that was not my idea. I hear you. Um, all right. So, no, that's that's a good combo. We'll, we'll see. Maybe I can uh, post this out there. Um, I don't know if anything we said we weren't supposed to say publicly. Um, but yeah, so I'm taking notes. I hope to follow up, you know, with uh, email and things, you know, that we're discussing and, and just trying to be, um, I don't know, persistent or consistent about this stuff. Um, any other topics you guys want to discuss? I mean, even if it's just about the MVP program or, you know, direction, I mean, uh, we don't have to go on and on forever here, but I'm just, while we're all here, you got it, anything you want to say? Ideas. Um, 
All right. Well, seems like everybody's good to go. Uh, well, I appreciate you guys uh, tuning in. I will send out an email invite for the next MVP meeting, which will be, what, second week in January on a Thursday, whenever that is. Um, and we will make it a recording. So what are you saying, David? How to get invited to an MVP meeting and not be an MVP. Yeah, I hope to be clearly communicating and articulating all that stuff. But Clint, I do have one comment that actually I want to just add on to what Peter was saying about the hangout or so. You know, of course, this is an MVP group and, uh, you know, either you interact with other community members at the summit or Twitter or things like that. You don't get really a face to face time. So having a hangout where anybody can ask a question and anybody can participate, yeah. like I can join or anybody can join. And so when a question is set out, set aside an hour or so, that was simply increase the engagement and help people out really. Uh, so I think that's a great idea. Yeah, agreed. 10 four sounds good. Yeah, no, like everybody's saying, everybody have, uh, you know, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy New Year, uh, be safe, Peter, if you're hang gliding or whatever you're doing. <laughs> and um, yeah, promote DNN Summit on Twitter. I think, you know, we could use the help with registrations, DNN Connect, we will get behind you guys and, and push and promote for y'all too. So I appreciate everybody attending. And uh, if you got any comments that you didn't want to share in the chat, feel free to email me uh, and we'll take it up. All right, guys, appreciate it.